why it turned, why it turned, you can't be talking now, you, you, you're, you're interrupting me, okay? That's the kind of fun I was <laughs> I want to know why Attorney Vince, though, is able to handle council meetings in Ashley, and I believe they're quick. And why isn't he here? Why is Attorney Henry here all the time? Because I have questions I want to ask Mr. Vince. Okay? That's, uh, I want to know why. Another thing is, I want to know why Ms. Herco wasn't drug out of here like I was and Linda Urban was last week when she talked from behind the rail. All I said was, you're out of your mind, and I got thrown out. Now, another thing I don't understand, I want to know why can't I, Mr. Mayor, talk to Mr. Barrett or Mr. Brown, right, or Mr. George or Mrs. LaBelle? How come I can't talk to like, Because you have to address counsel's body. All right, explain that. I'm sick of getting thrown out. <laughs> I want to bring up Mr. Mr. Kevin All right, well, I want to ask Mr. Barrett and Mr. George questions. How do I ask them if I'm not allowed to talk to them? And it seems like all of a sudden everybody else is talking to people. And I come down here and just try to be a good citizen. I brought you the proof. The mayor's a crook. He's already got $10,000 or more in campaign contributions from the only thing. And I came down as nice as I could and showed you the receipts. And if you knew my position, I, I'm stuck in debt. And, he, and, and, and I showed, and I brought the receipts down to show how the poor citizens of this city are getting lost. And Mr. Barrett and Mr. George were there with when I took over in 96. And I refused to give the city a kickback and the Liberty administration did the research and agreed with me. It was illegal because you're robbing the poor insurance companies and the poor people that gets their car from. But yet I'm thrown out of here. You won't talk to me. I tried to talk to you in the car lot, and not one of you so far has come up and said, hey, why don't we sit down? Why don't we, why don't we get this worked out? The mayor's a crook. And now I find out that there was liquor poured into the police station the last several years. I talked to multiple people who received liquor. From, allegedly from L.A.G. Cohen, how could you take liquor in a police station? That's what I want. That has me feeling it. Feeling it. That's what I want to know. I don't understand. How could I come down here with the proof? And you got to realize, when I keep bringing up, why am I so mad? I'm so mad because of Bill Brace telling me, don't worry about nothing. And then look what they did to me. And look what it cost the taxpayers, almost $400,000. Like I told you, the federal judge ruled in my favor. We didn't even have to have a trial. He knew the mayor was, a, was, a, was corrupt. At least that's my opinion. But I don't understand, especially you, Mr. Barrett, and especially you, Mr. George, how you could sit and know that I'm telling the truth, that this thing is robbery. It's robbery. I don't understand how you could just sit there telling me, oh, you should, why don't, why don't you do something? Maybe I am doing something. But how could you not sit there? You just have the ability, maybe you should ask Mr. Henry, you just have the ability to subpoena why don't you subpoena to Mr. Captain Uzo and ask him, were you in business with LAG Towing? Did you make money on these cars? He was in business with them. In business with them. How, how could this possibly be fair? Attorney Vinsco had a business relationship with LAG. From what I heard, Greg Brew did the landscaping down over Rural Bakery. And then I keep bringing up the mayor's campaign contributions. I truthfully believe if I would have given him Ten or twenty thousand dollars. I won't be in this situation on it today. And I did go to the FBI agent Joe Noon, and he never told me that him and Jerry Desoy go to dinner together. And I did go to the United States Attorney's Office. They didn't do nothing about it. But I noticed that how quick you'll throw me out of here, and all I'm doing is coming down here telling you people the truth. And I just don't understand how you could sit by knowing that your citizens are being robbed. And I just had a member of the media come up, and I showed him a stack of receipts. Yeah, one minute. I'm no. <laughs> <laughs> no. I just don't understand. I have to prove how these people could just sit there. But yet it's me. I'm criticized. Nobody will talk to me, and I'm telling the truth. Bill knows I'm telling the truth, and so does Tony, because they were there. This the mayor's crook. One of these days, his ceiling's going to collapse on him with this, because this was a ripoff scam. And it's when the citizen voice subpoenaed some uh, receipts in. But mysteriously, they all seemed to fall in line. There was multiple violations, but I pulled out one that should have been no more than $150 or $175. $650, $375 towing. And another thing, they're down there. Do you know when you go down to LAG, they charge you, certain people get charged $75 to open up the gate. Well, is it $75 to close it? So I'm telling you people the truth. I want to know how this council, as a whole council, could possibly sit here and know that a citizen is telling the truth, and yet you do nothing about it. Right, I may say that.
Thank you, sir. All right, can I get an answer? I have a question. I'm sorry. First of all, you have receipts. They don't go by receipts, they go by complaints. If the GPSO gets a complaint, he follows through. By giving you a, a receipt that they paid X amount of dollars, Chief does, this way doesn't know if there's a complaint. The, the, the complaints have to go to him, not to you. And when he gets it, uh, as when you recover, I got a complaint about you, I spoke to you, you explained why you did it, I agreed with that, and we went on. But you, you know, just because people complain, there might be reasons for that. But if he doesn't get the complaint, you could have a thousand receipts. If he doesn't have one complaint, like has no, no violation. Can I just ask no, you? No, no, yeah. Are you done, Mr. George? Yes. Mr. Barrett? Uh, Mr. George and I were on the same wavelength there with that. Uh, a victim of a crime, you're alleging these people are victims of crime. They are the victim, not you. You're an interested party. Oh, so, uh, before I even say any more, I want to compliment you on your demeanor tonight. I don't want to take a lot of restraint on you. Don't say I'm done. I don't ruin it now. You don't take it well up to this point. You've restrained yourself, you're bringing up issues, we are addressing it, as you can see, we get a little bit further this way. Uh, if there are victims, as you're calling them, that are being robbed. They need to come forward and go to the chief and, and follow through the process. You, don't say anything, I know you're, you're, you're chopping the bit there. The U.S. Attorney's Office is the place to go if you feel that somebody's doing something unethical. Uh, I also want to just say one thing, that I will talk to you, or will any other council member, our numbers last week were in a full page ad in the newspaper. Cell phone numbers, email addresses. I will answer every call that I get. If I can't answer it at the moment, if I'm sitting here and I can't answer it, I will call back, as will anyone here. We will talk civilly, we'll talk about issues. We're not hiding from anybody or anything. Uh, so if you want to call me tomorrow or tonight, or as long as it's not 2 a.m., I'll talk to you about issues. We can have civil discussions. But you need to take things to the proper place where they need to go. This is not the venue for that. This is not the forum for the things that you're talking about. If people feel they've been victimized, robbed, or whatever it may be, they need to do something about it the right way. <coughs> uh, you're correct. We do have the right to subpoena certain things. But there are two sides to every story. As Mr. George said, just because somebody presents a bill for $300 doesn't mean that there weren't extenuating circumstances. It needs to be investigated by the proper body. We are not the proper body to go out and investigate a charge. Plus, the victim has to come forward, Bob. The victim has to come forward and say, listen, I think I've been overcharged or discharged. And it, uh, so if you have people that are coming to you with this information, have them go to the police and make a complaint. If there's a legitimate complaint, the police will do something about it. Please, and, Mr. And, and we're not going to go back and forth. Just uh, call me. All right, just, just call me. Call it, just give me one minute, because you gave other people a little bit of belief, Mr. Kevin Thank you. Thank you. Well, just right, right, so you right. We did go to the right, one minute at the end. Hold on. Hold on. Come on, I'll talk to you outside. All right, hold on. I want to get it. No, I'll talk to you outside. There was a way when we filed a certified complaint and asked for a hearing, how it was, it was held, and they never, ever gave her a hearing. And how do you go to the chief? The secretary's husband was running the place, and Captain Hughes was in business with them. You can't go to them. They have a conflict of interest. No, Mike, Mike, one minute of the action. Come on. You're an idiot.